Welcome to Access All Areas, where Club Sport TV takes you inside the West Perth Football Club. This week we wrap up the league and reserve seasons with league coach Bill Monaghan and reserves coach Paul Sanzoni, and we take a look at the gym redevelopment here at Arena Joondala. We're here in the West Perth change rooms with West Perth league coach Bill Monaghan. Bill, uh, great win against Swan Districts last week. Good to be back on the winners list. Uh, very much so. I thought the, um, the guys were up and running from the start. They attacked the ball hard. Their, their ball use was a lot better and, and even though we were a little shaky in front of goals on, on the run, I thought our set shots um, were pretty good. I think we kicked 9-4 from set shots. So um, good good to get back on the winners list and, and now we can you know, have a week off and, and reassess ready for finals. Top two position is secured, so the double chance in the finals. Uh, good place to be leading into the into September. Yeah, very much so. That's been our aim all year, and, and the, to the players' credit, um, they've been able to achieve a, a top two finish. And 14 and 6, I'm sure everyone at West Perth would have taken that at the start of the year, even though at certain stages it looked like we are going to be slightly better than that. But as we've seen with, with us and Claremont and, and even East from Mandel after a, a good couple of weeks, that if you drop your guard against anyone in this competition, you, you can lose games. So um, 14 and 6 will take. A buy in the final round of the home and away season. What's the process over this next week, and uh, is it a good time to get the buy or not? Oh, look, um, I guess at the start of the year when you see your draw, you, you pro probably don't get enthused about a, a, a buy in the last round, but it's something that we've known about for the whole year, and, and, and we've planned accordingly. So um, we will do our normal post game reviews this week, um, recovery tonight, uh, and then we'll. Um, We'll just step up training probably Thursday this week, be our hardest session, which is unusual because we're normally fairly light on a Thursday night and have a bit of a trundle around on a Saturday morning and then I'll go off and watch some footy and I'm sure the players will just enjoy probably kicking back either watching some AFL or some waffle footy on the telly and, and probably do a few chores around the house. So, um, look, the boys are excited and, and look, very exciting time for the football club to have two sides and, and if the results go well on the weekend, the Colts will sneak in the final as well. You said last week that uh, keeping the players' confidence up would be one of your focuses. How's the confidence now and then what's the confidence like leading into the finals amongst the playing group? Oh, look, the, it was a fine line between um, being critical of the players and, and, and keeping them buoyant. And I thought last week was really good because the players took a lot of it upon themselves and, and that's one of the great beauties of our of our squad and our club that the players are very switched on and um, I think that they'll, they'll take the necessary confidence out of that. Sure we need to improve, probably if we play as well as we did on the weekend against Claremont second semi-final it probably won't be good enough so we, we need to keep that upward curve going and, and hopefully we'll get at our very best in two weeks time. Well, Bill, good to see West Perth back on the winner's list. Thanks again for joining us on Access All Areas. No worries. Thank you very much. For our meal, um, yeah, chicken pasta, uh, a bit of garlic bread, and a bit of cookies and cream off them afterwards. Um, I like to wear the same jocks every week. <laughs> Block party is my favourite band. Um, Kings of Leon. Um, it's pretty much a lot of stuff that's on Triple J, really. Probably Razor, Ray Buff Army. Um, just doesn't stop yapping, really. The East Perth and Subiaco. Um, pretty much my best mate, Blake Broadhurst, plays at Subiaco. Um, and East Perth, obviously, because of the Derby rivalry. I kicked six against South Mental once, so that's probably the highlight, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty easy one. Gobes or Gobsy. Miranda Kerr, pretty baby. Um, oh, uh, Leighton Meester off the Gossip Girl. Down yeah, play, he's going to win it by a long way, I think. We're here in the West Perth change rooms with Paul Sanzoni, the reserves coach of the West Perth Footy Club. Paul, uh, 14 and 6, the reserves so far this season, going into the finals in a couple of weeks. How's the season been so far? Yeah, oh, look, Shane, uh, as we spoke before, um, earlier on the year, it was probably a slow start for the reserves group. Um, we were one after four games or something. Um, and then we went on a, went on a run. 
um, Comer and 10 wins, tw 10 wins straight. Um, that got us back into the top half of the table. And as I said before, you know, I mean, we probably for about eight weeks there shared top spot and second spot with Claremont, going backwards and forth. Um, yeah, and then drop one. Um, and then, you know, the last six games, we split them probably three and three. So the last three games um, we've dropped going into the finals, and that's probably been in the same shape as our, our one side, the league side, you know what I mean? Um, whilst our top end of the blokes have had to push up and fill some holes in the in the league side, um, we've had to call on some young blokes that probably haven't had much game time this year as they would have liked. Um, and that's probably coincided with our form um, of, the, of the last three weeks. So that's, that's, that's pretty much it in, in summary for, for the reserves anyhow. I suppose it's uh, pretty hard for a reserves coach to, to be bringing players back from the amateurs and that sort of thing. Is that one of the major obstacles that you've got to go across? Yeah, oh, look, it's, it's probably not a major obstacle. Um, as as I've, I've stated before, we, we hold on to um, a certain number of blokes that... Um, I tend to go back to the amateurs whilst they're not playing here, but we have them in our training system. So when those guys are actually called upon, um, at least those guys come into the team structures and they know their roles week in and week out. So it's probably a little bit easier. And as I said, it's whilst the list is probably a little bit bigger than other clubs, um, we find it works really well instead of then having, towards the end of the year, um, going to the amateur clubs and asking for players. So we know that they go away training under us, um, going and playing their Saturday amateur competition, then when called upon coming back here and, and having it hit, hit out with us. East Fremantle, I think, are the likely opponents in the finals for the reserves team. What's the confidence like going in against them? Yeah, oh, look, um, you know, with like, the top fours shaped up, um, you know, we were down at East Fremantle Oval um, a few weeks back. Um, I happened to be up in Geraldton with the league side and um, they pretty much touched us up um, down there, but... Uh, in, in Henson saying that, um, they'd had a f fairly healthy list playing in there too. It's Warren running around, Riley Dunn running back around and all those kind of guys. So it was uh, pretty tough for our group. Um, and the week after that, we just got our group together and said, look, you know, overnight we don't lose our ability. The biggest thing, we've just got to keep improving on our confidence and getting our confidence back. Look, it was great we beat them earlier on in the year, um, given that uh, we were probably at the top of our game. Um, so going down, whether we meet them at uh, Medibank or East Mount Laval, whatever may be the case in a couple of weeks' time, just got to remind the guys to stay confident in, in their own ability and know that if we do play at our very best, we have a very good chance of winning a game of footy. Well, always good to hear how the reserves are going. Paul, thanks very much for joining us again on Access to All Areas. No worries. Thanks very much, Shane. We're down here in the West Perth gym with West Perth Chief Executive Jerry O'Day. Jerry, you've got some pretty big plans down here at West Perth for the gym. So we have, yeah, this is a, uh, what we call um, our Harry Potter broom cupboard. Um, and uh, at the moment, uh, we're in a, uh, a project um, plan where we're trying to uh, knock this out and, and move further out onto the road. Uh, initially what we're looking at is trying to build a, uh, a bigger gymnasium and also a player auditorium. So it'll be a two-storey facility and uh, it's been in the pipeline, I guess, or we've been talking about it for about two years now. And uh, we've, we've started, we've actually got a slab outside, which is pretty exciting for us. So I guess that means that the, just the plans and all the talking is starting to come to some fruition. So we're pretty happy with our pad and we should have some steel structures go up in place in the next uh, couple of weeks. But uh, I hope that by Christmas time we finish and uh, it will just give us another really good arm to our strength and conditioning and our player welfare and education programs. And uh, it's going to be exciting. I know the players are really looking forward to it uh, because after 18 years there's really been no improvements to our change rooms at Arena Junior Love. So this is something, even though not a big um, uh, extension, it's still, I guess from our point of view, quite meaningful. It's going to cost about $400,000 all up. Where's the funding coming from? Yeah, about 400000 maybe give or take uh, 10 or so. But uh, we've been very fortunate uh, in, in some respects. The state government have been terrific for us. Uh, we were lucky enough to have Colin Barnett come out to uh, Arena Joondal up in January. And uh, one of our sponsors, Tony O'Gorman, uh, the member for Joondal up, had chatted to Colin and asked him to come and visit us. And the Premier was good enough to come out. So we spoke to him about and gave him a tour of the facility. And when he saw the gym and you know the, the medical room and the other bits and pieces that we have, um, he was certainly of the view that we needed some assistance and the state government good enough to give us two hundred thousand dollars. We also along with the AFL, um, the, the peak you know footballing body in the state in the country, sorry, and they were also good enough to match the state government funding. So the two of those were complementary. So we uh, managed to get four hundred thousand dollars together, which will complete our gym and auditorium and also assist us with the fit out for those as well. 
And uh, so impressed was Colin Barnett with uh, what we were trying to do. He actually threw in another $200,000 as well, which we'll use just around the ground and the, the grandstand for some capital expenditure improvements so people can see some repairs to signage and some improvements and some new seating and, and some new corporate boxes, that sort of thing as well. So it's really exciting for us just from an administrator's point of view. I know the players love winning games, but I love getting money from government departments. And when we've been out here for 18 years and we haven't improved anything yet, uh, for me it's a big boost that we're able to do this and I can't wait for it to be finished at the end of the year. Obviously great news for the club. What sort of benefits are the football department going to see? I think we can see is a much more professional um, result from our strength and conditioning. Um, the fact that you've been here on strength and conditioning nights and you've seen how we use the oval and we do a lot of our weights um, programs outside and uh, on a warm sunny night that's fine but when it's cold and wet and miserable um, you know, we are obviously found wanting and this room itself as you can see is, is actually disgraceful to use as a gymnasium so the fact that it's going to be um, uh, probably doubled or tripled in space will help the players, it's going to be fitted out with new equipment and will just be really good for our players and strength and conditioning staff. The other aspect I suppose Shane is that the little 52 seat auditorium upstairs will mean that the players can sit in comfort and go through the vision from the weekend. Uh, no longer do they have to sit on the cold floor and, and uh, you know, listen to Bill's um, sermons from the Mount. They'll be able to sit in comfort and go through the vision. And not just from our, our senior point of view, but also our Colts, our development squads and our district um, friends who are doing coach accreditation courses and all those sorts of things, parent briefings. We're going to be able to use the auditorium for them as well. So it's going to be a really important resource for us. And uh, again, you know, uh, can't wait for it to be finished so we can see it and start to use it. Well, Jerry, uh, fantastic news for the club. Thanks very much for joining us on Access All Areas. Thanks, Shane. Pleasure. Well, that wraps up another week of Access All Areas, where Club Sport TV takes you inside the West Perth Football Club. Join us again next time as we follow the Falcons into the final.